Even if you're not following a high volume program, if you want to achieve the best results from higher reps, then your work capacity must still be high. Otherwise, you'll fail to push each set to its limit, either due to breathlessness or a lack of necessary pain tolerance. In other words, proximity to failure, which is the number one growth trigger, won't be equal to what has commonly been referred to as the hypertrophy rep range. See, sets ranging from 6 to 12 are not uniquely hypertrophic, it's just that it doesn't take much to activate the high threshold motor units. And with lower reps to say 5, from rep 1, there's already high force production. And you don't have to worry about intensity of effort since it's the last 4 to 5 reps before failure that are actually effective, and you're already in that zone. So after 30 to 45 seconds tops, you're already maximally fatigued, thus being efficient without causing more fatigue, which often leads to form breakdown or prematurely stopping a set. Conversely, with reps of 20 or beyond, that set will usually be a minimum of 60 seconds, but can even extend up to two minutes. That's double the length of a normal low to moderate rep set. So let's say my target rep was 20, this means the set really begins by rep 15 in terms of actually equating the stimulus given the effective rep model, which explains why weight on the bar or percentages are less relevant than we once thought, at least on paper. Because in the real world, work capacity is the X factor that will make or break the gains from higher reps. This is the real reason why 20 rep barbell squats are not widely practiced. Why do only hardcore programs include them? Why did Matt Wenning have to spend months doing extensive GPP work to break Tom Platt's squat record, even though he could already squat over 800 multiple times? Well, it's because higher reps require more than your muscles. You need extreme focus, pristine technique, the ability to hit failure despite scorching pain and maintaining a breathing pattern that won't affect your bracing or force you to stop when there were clearly more reps in the tank, which is why hitting failure with higher reps is actually harder. As mentioned previously, even if you're not a volume guy, that should be a choice. Not because you can't handle more volume. See, I can do ultra high volume bro workouts any day of the year because I never neglected my conditioning and always mixed in a variety of rep ranges with calisthenics. So even though I average 12 sets a week for big muscles, gun to my head, I'll handle 20 sets from day one because the rest of my program forces the need for higher work capacity. That's why it's not necessarily volume dependent. For example, if you perform 10 sets of three with five minutes of rest between sets, and yes, many strength athletes do train this way. It would not develop your work capacity to the same extent as doing three sets of 20 with a slow tempo and two minutes of rest. Now adding on to this, when you mix in unilateral work, your volume remains unchanged, but your body is essentially redoing everything twice, which places further stress on your cardiovascular system. This is quite notable on rows or split squats. Of course, the same principle applies to giant sets or antagonist supersets. The total time to load increases, yet the volume remains the same, as do the hypertrophic outcomes. However, the impact on work capacity building is entirely different and can either make or break you. Therefore, sets are often correlated with work capacity, but can absolutely be separated depending on the exercise, the rep range, the tempo, the intensification method, and Here's a big one, the actual split. And what I specifically mean here is either do an upper body day or full body day, which is king for developing work capacity. And in my sincere opinion, a low volume full body program will build better work capacity than a high volume bro split, which is a secret benefit in recommending them for novices, even though no split is inherently superior if weekly volume and proximity to failure are equalized. So. For pure muscle growth in isolation, yes, that's the same, and every study will support this. But in the long term, which studies won't be able to support due to funding and feasibility, trust that the full body group will always come out more fit, allowing them to transition into any system. So it's impossible to ever be bottlenecked by lack of work capacity, which becomes far more important the higher your reps go. Like I would say, the 15 to 20 zone requires good enough work capacity, while the 20 to 35 zone requires premium work capacity. And yes, this is doable like the thousands of calisthenics athletes have shown. That said, you may have noticed that I specified 20 to 35 reps, not 20 to 30. 
why after all these years the extra five reps and is that really equal to doing sets of 10 for hypertrophy well full credit to jeff nipper for the deep dive on this one since in his recent video after compiling all the data discussing various rep ranges it turns out that the real hypertrophy range is 4 to 35 not 5 to 30 which is actually mind-blowing but makes perfect sense when you examine Henneman's size principle. The only times where outcomes were not equated was in the 20 to 25 percent zone. And that's likely because of lactic acid burnup and central fatigue is too much to bear. Although I would personally argue that someone with a strong mindset, not your average lifter, who pushes very hard will still grow here. Because physiologically, if you hit momentary muscular failure on rep 50, it doesn't make sense that you somehow didn't accumulate the effective reps. Particularly if you went fast and unbroken without lasting long, which perhaps overcomes the pain sensations. So studies pulling in intermediate lifters might show something else. And if that's you, great. Don't go above 35 reps, which is still high enough. Certainly higher than what we once thought. But if you're an Iron Wolf calisthenics beast, then going beyond would still work. But only if you can mentally and physically tough it out. Barbell Apparel's full line of 2.0 jeans are here. The highly anticipated Athletic Fit Jeans 2.0 are restocked, featuring fresh washed and styles. Whether you like slim, straight, relaxed, or bootcut fits, they have you covered. These jeans are designed for maximum comfort and movement, perfect for your active lifestyle. Don't miss out on this restock. Order now before supplies run out and join Barbell Apparel's community of athletes who make no excuses and settle for nothing less than the best. Backed by 365 day no questions asked guarantee, this training gear and casual wear is built to power whatever your workouts, workdays, and adventures demand. Click my link to see these jeans as well as some of my favorite items. At any rate, with the hypertrophy rep range being pushed out slightly more, this solidifies once and for all. The idea of work capacity being an independent growth stabilizer. It's literally the only way that we can confidently assert that doing 35 f***ing reps is comparable to 5, given the massive gap. In addition, this is incredible news for those who love calisthenics because as usual, it's totally vindicated for bodybuilding purposes. Even for basic exercise, there's a lot to milk there. And then with small technique adjustments, usually being super range of motion with bad leverages, some exercise might never need to be weighted. Like desperate handstand push-ups, super wide grip pull-ups, slow and controlled pause dips, general ring work, and so on. Then, combined with down workouts, it's even more viable. So if 30 down push-ups, which is 465 reps, was too easy, well, going up to 35, which is 630 reps, and way more challenging, will continue ballooning those pecs similar to benching workouts. It's actually insane what a small plus five rep boost can do to overall programming, the freedom. It's almost like we've all collectively been demotivated, eligible to do exercise that we once thought were too good for us. So besides being a generally fit badass, work capacity and calisthenics are the dynamic duo for getting big from higher reps. Lastly, if you're in a calorie deficit or close to being shredded, then you might be doing higher reps to spare the joints or because you now can for many bodyweight exercises. However, if the work capacity doesn't match your new body, then you'll actually struggle to maintain muscle because the deeper you go into a cut, the more your work capacity naturally lowers. And you don't want your volume to eventually be so low that it's hard to finish workouts or sustain weekly performance. Because once you start getting gassed out from even two sets per exercise, which by the way, happened to me twice, especially two weeks out before my competition, that's the number one end stage indicator. Otherwise, expect a fast downward spiral where you're losing way more than minus ones. So to minimize regression, your base fitness must be high before you start losing weight. Meaning, it doesn't matter if you're a set of bear mode. For all physique goals, work capacity can never be taken for granted. Mr. Barrymo wants to get more or less weight for lifting because he's too darn strong and Mr. Aesthetic unlocks new pound for pound opportunities but doesn't want to lose muscle. Therefore, try making certain aspects of your training uncomfortable. Be more than a hypertrophy enthusiast. And please, 
Stop skipping cardio, which I know a lot of you are guilty of. Personally, I just do burpee workouts now, and I think the Noble Natty community has a lot more room for improvement here, as I recently discussed with Lee from Strong and Condition. So let's leave it at that for now. If you want to see more content on conditioning, let me know, and I'll talk to you next time.